applicants. So I'd like to, before we then start on, you know, which I'm sure you're all waiting for, uh, I'd like to raise one more issue that we've been debating a lot within TEEP and with a lot most of the people who've been talking about uh, TEEP and discussing with us, and that is this whole challenge of, yeah, if you put a value to nature, if you monetize, does that mean you're selling out on nature? You're, you're just doing a simple cost-benefit relationship, and, and it's, it's, it's remained a challenge. It's been a challenge in the academic community for at least 20, if not 30 years, where we've been heavily debating on this, but also in the policy community. So maybe we can have a quick round on this topic, and maybe Pavan, you can begin, but I'd also like the others to enter on this, yeah, the team <coughs> position on this and how to communicate it. Sure, and, and I, kick off is the right word because uh, valuation is a human institution. How you value depends on why you value, it depends on who values and in what context you value. And these are all some of the, the recognized um, uh, points regarding valuation which we have published as part of the, the TEAB report, as you know, chapter four, Eduardo Bronzizio's chapter. Um, so uh, I think the reality is that we need to be circumspect in the way that we address this human institution and not uh, simplistic. We, we have never anywhere suggested that uh, TEAB is a cost-benefit based you know, stewardship model for the whole earth. Uh, we've never ever then uh, suggested other than that there is value recognition that takes place at a societal level, at a community level, and does not need economics. And that sometimes you can demonstrate value with the use of good economic logic, but do not even have to capture value. There are many examples where value demonstration leads to policy change, and that's sufficient. Sometimes you don't even need that. Just the society standing up for something can lead to policy change, and we've seen that. And sometimes you can lead you can use capture mechanisms, the so-called payments for ecosystem services uh, of various kinds. And then occasionally you might find that depth and liquidity that is provided by markets can help. So yeah, there are two or three examples of, of market solutions. But the reality is that this whole area of valuation is very, very vast and very uh, multi-hued. And I think we need to uh, acknowledge that as TEEB reports explicitly do and as the TEEB community who has worked on this area clearly does, and to see it in the context of norms, of customs, of strategies, which cut across an entire swathe, all the way from looking at land use planning changes to looking at um, you know, um, adding premiums to uh, products which are produced in a responsible manner, eco-certification and eco-labeling products. There's a whole swathe of solutions, cutting across norms, policies, um, <coughs> economic mechanisms, capture mechanisms, and some markets. And I think to simplify is, is a mistake because there are some things that you can measure which you just cannot, uh, and other things that you can measure and, and value and, and provide some economic estimations for and others that you cannot. But the reality is that we need to be conscious of all of those. We need to be conscious of the many different layers that value comes from. I think that's really all I'd like to say from point of view of the T perspective. Thank you. Or would any of you like to add on? I would like just uh, continuing what uh, Pavan said. Um, we see more and more, particularly in Europe, where resources are being examined from many different angles, from a biodiversity perspective, a public good perspective, and so on, that we are in real need of I guess, in a sense, bringing more institutional structures into the frame. And I mean that in, in the best possible way, not in a bureaucratic way. Because what you see, for example, around water is how imperative it is that people not only understand that water is becoming a scarce resource, but there are genuine choices and that water is valued in very different ways in very different cultures, uh, ac even across Europe. And what we lack, in a sense, is a, a way about having what I would call two different kinds of discussion. One, a more deliberative discussion, so what do you mean by water and its value to society? And then a sort of delivery discussion about, well, how are you going to divide it up? Who, how are you going to make sure there's water for people to drink, there's water for ecosystems, and there's water that can be for abstraction and looking after 
other parts of industry. And what we lack often is the deliberative process where people can actually just think about and look each other in the eyes and say, well, what do you mean by that? And I look to um, Australia, where they were in desperate straits for a while because of the drought, seeing that, in fact, it wasn't just about the water coming out of the taps, but it was about the whole ecosystems. It was a way in which they brought into urban setting the plants that were completely unrealistic given the amount of water that was available. And so the water utility did a very interesting thing in, in Melbourne and a couple of other places. They actually took all their senior managers and they put them out into the supermarkets. And they essentially said, OK, you tell us what's the most important thing about the way that you're living regarding water and so on. And it was extraordinary for these engineers because, of course, people said, well, the most important thing in one sense is water security. I want to turn the tap on and I want water to come out. But the second most important thing were ecosystems, that people really saw that there was a need to have the natural environment around them. And then, actually, price was the fourth thing. It was, it was quite extraordinary. So over a very short period of time, people took to heart the fact that they had planted across the whole city the completely wrong ecosystem. They brought all sorts of plants in that were completely inappropriate, and therefore they looked out into nature and brought into the city, into their gardens, a completely and did more sort of diverse more water, um, uh, sort of scarce tolerant species. And then they learned, in a sense, that they needed much less water just to keep much more greenery around them. But it required, in a way, a very deliberative process to ask people to step back from the daily business of demanding water to actually think about, well, what were the values? What was it they really wanted to be surrounded by? And if I was you know, thinking about the future, it would be about how do we create those processes, those deliberative processes, for people to really understand the different kinds of values that come into play. And that's really what I think TEED could really help to do, not always to put a value on or a price on something, but really to create the setting in which people can discuss that. If I may, I, I will use what I use several times in advisory board, and this is encouraging the people to understand. There is a very difficult discussion between the policymakers, scientists, economists, and the general public when you speak about the value of the ecosystems. Everyone has a different setting in the mind. And if you say, we put a price on that, then immediately you have the question of intrinsic value and you cannot sell it, etc. If you don't do it, several groups of the population simply would not discuss it because they have no apparatus for that. So it's, it's not about this or that is the only right way how to value it. It is actually about the whole set of the approaches. And what I want to specially mention, because I was many times in discussion with a lot of colleagues also here in the room uh, when we set up the, the studies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There, there is a demand on the science side to be precise, to be accurate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but what the policymakers want, if they make the decision, is a clear message now, not saying it looks like it is very valuable, but we need another 15 years to, you know, to, to bring uh, you the evidence. This is not helpful. And if the decisions have to be made, you need the evaluation now with the methods which are available now. So you necessarily have to simplify sometimes or generalize. And I think there is nothing wrong in that if you say it is generalized to this or that level, it is basic based on the present knowledge or whatever, but it must be a clear message. What is the most, I mean, exciting for me in TEEP is that, that it was already a kind of breakthrough there because we agreed that there are elements where you can put a price. There are other elements when you only demonstrate the value. There are other elements when we just need to understand it is important, but all this demonstrates that we have to do something with that. And I think this is very important. So it is a set of, uh, let's say, tools. It is not the only one, only single, which is absolutely accurate and right and, and whatever. So I think this, this should be kept and developed further. Okay, thank you very much to the entire panel and thank you to you for your patience and interest. I'd like one person to stand up so you know one more face tonight. That's Matteo Rogero, who has been behind the emails with, I think, most of you. So now...
like to invite you to move down to the lobby. Those of you who don't have your registration completed yet, I think they're still down there, so you can complete that. And also there's, the, there's a dinner reception and some live music. So start with the community building and get to know each other and discuss with these people. And anyone else you have? So if you haven't met at least three new people by the end of the dinner, you've failed on the first uh, task of this conference.